Hey guys, Domingo Kango here, and welcome to another video. And today we're going to be going over how to rotate objects consistently and understanding the properties that come along with it so that you can really make whatever you want in this game and become pretty pretty dang good at building. So let's get into it. So first let's start out with the basics. So when starting out with the basics we want to understand how these objects work. So if I were to grab an object such as this um, stove top, um, you can see it is strictly locked to a um, specific grid and it's not really as free range of motion as a lot of the other objects in this game. Now an object like this will be almost impossible to rotate upside down without scripting or diagonal without scripting. There are ways to get it off the grid um, using specific items from the game but as far as I know so far there's no way to get it to actually rotate in that um, odd direction. And in objects such as this hay block, you can see that it has a free range of motion just like the dojo shelf here. It has a free range of motion. So not as harsh of a grid lock. Now there's also a way to get a half grid movement. So here's how you do it. If you use one of the dojo shelves like this, you can see that um, the little edge piece actually sticks out um, a little bit out more than the, the grid. So if I were to place an object here against it, I mean, sorry, on top of it, you can see it sits a half grid over from its previous direction, which means if I were to take an object like, um, like this and place it on top, I can now get that half grid movement like this. And if I delete it and now if I go in hide mode and place it relatively in the same positioning as before and go in slash show, yeah. So as you can see, it is actually a half pixel away from where it was before. Now this is very useful if you actually want to get very specific with alignments. And I have used this on other creations such as the car over here, the windshield <clears throat> And these lights right here for the headlights, which are blunders, they didn't go into pos position in the spot that I wanted it to. And the only way that I was going to be able to get it to do that was if I had a half pixel or a half studs length for my grid, which I could do using the dojo shelf, as you can see right here. Now that's kind of the general um, studs lengths that you can go in this game. And now we're going to go into how to rotate the object upside down in the first place, or face flat. So to make this incredibly easy, we're going to start with posters. Now the posters are very, very nice because it's very easy to do with this object right here, the glass pane. Now using this object, if I hover my poster over, you just want to see which way it falls when you press R on top. And as you can see, it fell face flat. Which means if I face it the other way, like this, and I press R for rotate, it falls towards the ceiling. And this is actually relatively consistent. If I do it here, as you can see, face flat. If I have it facing towards me again, it's going to be face flat. Your character's length away from this object surprisingly actually makes it rotate um, consistently or not. Because sometimes if you're too far away, like right here, it might not actually, see, it's not gonna flip towards the ceiling, but if I'm over here and do it, it flips towards the ceiling. Not sure what causes that, but yeah, it just does. But as you can see, it's pretty, it's actually incredibly consistent. So now you know how to get your posters face flat and up towards the ceiling. Now, obviously you can acquire this um, without actually knowing the direction of your, your, um, glass pane you can just randomly spa spam it till you get the direction you want but the more you rotate an object the more glitched out it becomes but actually over time I learned that's actually not the case the reason it seems like that is because its sticky side is now well towards the top so as you so to put this into simpler terms the side that's facing the ceiling right now is actually the side that was supposed to be face flat on the ground. 
which means when you move your cursor along any block or object in this game, if I do it on the ground here, it actually doesn't it doesn't follow that rule and it, it's very hard to get it where you want it. As you can see, it's very glitchy and you know if I move it back and forth, it, it doesn't it just doesn't move. Whereas if I do it on the ceiling, it does move. And that's because it's a side that wants to <clears throat> stick to the object is on the ceiling. Now this works all directions. So if I were to want it on the ceiling, as you can see, it's very hard to get it to stay on the ceiling, but it's very easy to get it to stay on the ground. It's just how the behavior of objects work in this game. Every object is set with its um, sticky side or its side that it wants to stick to, most likely on the bottom. And as you can see, it's sideways here, which means it's most active on that side that the poster on the bottom is facing because it wants to stick to that side. As long as that makes sense, it should make it a little bit easier when building um, some objects, um, a certain side, like the corner will want to, it'll be easier to push that object into place. I will have some pictures up on screen of me building, kind of using this format. Um, I think one of them I was using the signs as well. And the reason I have the signs there is because the objects I was trying to place, it has to be on a flat surface. So I have to make the flat surface beforehand so that it's uh, easier for me to place them because I can't just place them in the air. They have to have something to place it on, whereas the signs, for whatever reason, don't really have to have that, and it's a lot easier to place them on each other. Now, as you could see um, with this log, any object that isn't locked to the grid is going to be able to rotate on this glass pane. It actually works on almost anything, you know, it doesn't have to be the glass pane that makes them rotate, but it does make it a lot easier and predictable. So I assume if I had it this way, it would flip towards the ceiling. Yep, and now it's on its ceiling side. And again, like I said, it doesn't work with items like this. And as you can see, it only rotates sideways because it's on a big grid. And for whatever reason, big grid items don't like to rotate upside down or sideways or any direction at all. So now how do we get an object to be diagonal without scripts? Well, it's actually a little bit complicated, but not the worst thing in the world. So you're going to want this briefcase right here, or I guess any object, including yourself, that can make an object go diagonal. I just found this to be the most consistent. So I'm going to drop it now in the direction that I want, which is that way diagonal, and I can grab an object now, such as the such as the dojo um, shelf, and place it. And as you can see, it's diagonal, and it's exactly where I want it. And if I go like this, you can quite literally, as long as it doesn't fall off this grid, you can make a stair that's diagonal. And anything that you place on these other objects will stay in its diagonal um, format, like that. It stays, um, so that's extremely useful. And then obviously anything that isn't on that format will be on its regular um, rotation side. So as you can imagine, you can make some pretty cool staircases like this. Now for the briefcase, as sometimes it does um, get a little bit messed up, I'm going to show you how to make the staircase in a different way. So if yours is having a problem where if you place it like this and it doesn't want to go all the way towards the ground. So if it doesn't want to go towards the ground, like in this case, you can actually just kick it and, you know, try and get it in the direction you want and get it as close as you can to the ground, which is probably going to be about here. And then you're actually going to want to take your dojo shelf and rotate it like this so that that longer side that sticks out usually is actually facing towards the bottom. And now if I go over here and try and put my object here, as you can see now it is touching the ground. So if I were to take this and place it on top, it now gives the illusion similar to this one over here that it is stairs as well. And you can continue the path upwards, obviously getting rid of this one if you want. And if I, for example, if I keep going up, there you go. 
that's your staircase there. It just looks a little different, but I think it still does the job if that is a problem for you. Now that's how to get an object sideways like that um, face flat on the ground. However, if you're doing something more of like a roof, um, you're going to want something like the church podium. <clears throat> and as you can see, it has a slant on it. Now, not every object that has a slant in this game um, has a slant hitbox, but this one does. And you're able to place it here. And as you can see, it sits sideways like that. You can have it as low as you want and as high as you want as long as it allows for it. I do know sometimes it has its limitations. But if you get rid of it, you can always attach more onto it. Um, it just, you know, it's a little bit more difficult, you know, see like that. And then you can put them attached onto the side like this. And yeah, you, you can make some, I guess, unique things out of this. Um, do with it as you choose or like. But yeah, that's the main properties of the church podium is more of like a roof type situation. However, if you wanted an indoor roof or something with posters or a higher slant, you're going to want to use the church bench. Now, I don't know what it is with these church items, but they seem to have these weird hitboxes on them. So it's actually pretty, pretty dang useful. But if I scroll down here and grab my poster, as you can see, if you have it on this little bench part, it sticks um, up in this weird way. And you can obviously rotate it like this and get your, you know, thing to sit sideways like that. So if I wanted this to be sideways diagonal, you can have it sideways diagonal. And obviously with that one, you can also attach onto it as well. So with all those rotation things out of the way, um, I hope it really kind of opened up your mind to a lot of tactics and ways you could go about making things in this game. Um, and that half pixel thing that I taught you as well with the dojo shelf allows for even more um, consistency in making things symmetrical. I also wanted to end this off on one other note though. So how I've kind of looked at objects is more so for their shape rather than for their anticipated use. And this couldn't be more prominent than the dojo shelf. The dojo shelf is one of the most used items in this game, it seems, for making wood shapes in, in the game. And its main purpose was to actually be a shelf, and obviously people started using it not in a shelf way. But yeah, I mean, this goes with any item in the game. It shouldn't be looked at as like, hey, that's its only use. Um, I really think that with time, you know, and the effort you put into something, you can really make almost anything that you want in this game. You know, the limitations are almost endless. Um, <clears throat> you just got to kind of figure out how to do it. Because like this lamp, for example, it has this curve bit in it. And if you wanted a handle, that's perfect for that. Or like a like the chair that I had that had that armrest, that's what I used it for. I didn't use it for its lamp, I used it for the shape. And I'm sure many of you already know this, um, if you build a lot, but I'm just trying to get it out there for people who are maybe a little bit newer to this whole situation going on. But it seems like people are really starting to get the hang of this whole merge thing. And, you know, I can put some pictures up right now of other people's creations. <clears throat> and, you know, some have been doing it for a longer period of time. Some are just starting to do it now. But I think this is really something quite special. It's kind of a new era for this game. Um, I remember when it, the posters were kind of like a huge breakthrough. Like, oh, you can make textures. Houses started to have decals all over the place. But now I'm starting to see a trend where people are starting to make their own objects in the game. Uh, and yeah, I think that's really cool. You know, it's cool to see something like that um, take place. Yeah, uh, that's how I kind of wanted to end the video. Um, I just wanted to, the main um, goal of this video to be, you guys can really do whatever you want in this game. You know, it's the limitations are there, but 
I don't think that it is impossible to make whatever you really want to make. But yeah, I got more stuff coming out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like. It is much appreciated. You guys have been a huge support to me so far, and I am very appreciative of that. So thank you.